So I know a lot of you guys are like, I don't want to do English teaching. I'm not interested. Henny, I get you, okay? English teaching can be boring sometimes. Like after I did it for two years, I was like, <laughs> I'm done, okay? Hey guys, it's Seneca the Hazina Girl, and today I want to talk to you guys about how you can get a part-time job when you come live in Japan. So let's get right into it. Okay, so before I even start this video, I just wanted to mention three things that you should know before you even look for a part-time job. First thing, in Japan, you can only work a maximum of 28 hours if you're coming here as a student. Second thing, Japanese jobs typically only pay once a month. They will only pay you your full monthly salary at the end of the month. So if you're used to like getting paid twice a week or once a week or whatever in your home country, just be prepared that you're only gonna get paid once at the end of the month. There are jobs that offer like weekly salary or daily salary even, but you have to like specifically look for them and they're kind of hard to find. So keep that in mind. And then the third thing you should know is, and this is from my personal experience, you should give yourself a little bit of time to be able to adjust before you find a job. I know some of you guys are like, I'm gonna land in Japan and find a job in two weeks. Well, let me tell you, giving yourself that much of a tight deadline is really just gonna put you in such a tough situation because if I'm being honest with you, adjusting to a new country while also trying to find a job is kinda hard to do at the same time. So I just suggest that you give yourself at least two to three months of you know prepared savings and money put aside for living expenses because you don't wanna be stuck in a situation where you haven't found a job yet and you don't know what to do for money. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get right into the tips. So the way I want to do this is I'm going to give you guys tips plus my own personal experience. But I hope these tips are helpful for you guys because I have done lots of part-time jobs in my day, honey, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you, if I were to start right now to start naming them, I don't even know. It's probably more than 10 for sure. Uh, and if you guys didn't know, I've been living here for four years. So of course, I've gotten the chance to see the kind of part-time jobs that are good, see the part-time jobs that are not so good, and I'm going to give you guys is the real tea, the real advice, okay? Number one, the first tip I have for you is if you're coming here as a student, you should ask your school for job advice. So um, first of all, if you guys didn't know, I came here as a Japanese language student and my school at the time had like a whole board with a bunch of job listings. The cool thing about that is that at least you know for a fact that those jobs are cool with having foreigners working there and you probably will get several options that are like specifically for foreigners. Like maybe they're looking for people to teach a specific language that isn't English. English, um, or they want like you know specific people from a certain country to work at like a restaurant from that country or something like that you know so I think that's a great option to just start off if you're looking for something you don't know where to start ask your school they definitely have some kind of like board or some kind of center where you can like find jobs so just ask around number two is make sure to check out a website called My Nabi Baito. And basically this website has so many different job listings. I mean, you can find anything from restaurants to working at a store, to working for a small boutique, to working for a little bread shop. You can find anything. It has tons of different baitos, is what they call them in Japanese, or part-time jobs. And basically, yeah, you can find whatever your heart desires. And this website is actually a website that Japanese people use to find jobs. And it just so happens to be the website that I used to find my first job. So if you guys didn't know, my first job ever in Japan was at a hotel. And this hotel was pretty well known. And essentially I found the job on My Nabi Baito. I just looked it up and I found this job that was pretty good. And if you guys didn't know, minimum wage in Japan is like roughly a thousand yen. But this job paid 1,300 yen. So I quickly, you know, just like contacted the people in charge. They told me to come in for an interview. And then after I passed it, I went into their offices to do the documents and I had a job. So this job was cool because all I did was um, I would pick up plates and I would just kind of bring them back to the washing, like the dishwashing area. Uh, and then uh, I got paid 1,300 an hour for that. And I also got free hotel food, which was the bomb.com. So that was really nice. And the cool thing about that job too is that it didn't require that much Japanese. Like I, did, I wasn't having full conversations with the guests. I would talk with them sometimes if they were like really interested in knowing, like a lot of them were like, what country are you from? Like, dochi no kuni desu ka? And I was just like, um, kana dochi in desu ka? Is thank you. Uh, and that was, that was it. It was a good way to like practice my Japanese a little bit. I could hear what people were talking about. I listened to the conversations. And at the end, we would just thank the guests and say like, Arigatou gozaimashita. And then we would clean up the venue and that's it. 
that's what I got paid to do. So I did that job for like about six months. I left because at the end I found out that there was some shady business going on in the hotel and I wasn't feeling it and I was like, mm -mm, I don't know about this, I need to leave. So, I mean, you can work at a hotel too, but honestly, it's to your own discretion. Make sure that it's a hotel that like is proper and nice and good. Um, so yeah, that was my first job. All right, so the second tip I have for you guys is use social media websites. I don't know why I said that like Trump. <laughs> Was there a reason for that? I don't know. Um, but basically, if you guys didn't know, um, you can look for jobs via like Instagram or even Facebook. I mean, I've only really heard of people finding jobs on Instagram, not really Facebook, but I'm sure it's possible. If you look up like forums or if you use hashtags to search for certain jobs, you'll definitely find different options. And actually what I did, which I wish I didn't, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, I'm pretty happy because it ended up finding me a job anyways. Uh, I used Craigslist. And uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh my God, Senna, you use Craigslist? <laughs> okay, wow, you were really desperate. But no, um, you would be surprised. In Japan, Craigslist is actually pretty trustworthy. You can get like furniture. I've gotten furniture from Craigslist. Um, you can get like free items from people who are leaving the country. Craigslist is mostly just used as like a forum and it's rather safe in Japan. Of course, there are some sus websites, some sus posts from people that you're not sure if they're technically legal so use your common sense when you're looking things up on Craigslist I don't highly recommend it to be honest with you but I'm just telling you my truth I ended up finding an English teaching job on Craigslist which became my second job in Japan and this job was definitely one of my favorites I did this job for two years guys for two whole years um, it was super easy super fun for me because I love kids I love teaching uh, and so I was basically just yeah having fun teaching these kids English and uh, I would come in um, twice a week I would go there every Wednesday and Saturday and Wednesdays I would just work for I think like four or five hours and then on Saturdays I would work from like six to eight hours depending on the shift yeah it was just like one of those jobs that you do and you're like am I even working that's how I felt, it was amazing. So if you guys are anything like me and you want to use Craigslist because you're just curious, you wanna see what it's like, my number one suggestion would be contact the people directly. So use Craigslist as a way to see the job listing, but make sure you find like whatever other website or other social media platforms that prove that this company is legit and contact them directly through their websites or whatever the case may be. Because yeah, just Craigslist can be fishy sometimes, okay? So be careful, be safe. Next up on the list is do an internship. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Um, Senna, how is an internship gonna get me a job? Last I checked, most internships are not paid. That is not wrong. However, an internship can at least get your foot in the door, sis, okay? Because sometimes that's all you need. You just need to be able to show your face, say, hey, look at me, I'm talented and I'm capable and I can do a job if you want me to. And then that could lead to other things. In my case, that's exactly what happened. A friend of mine was like, hey, um, my company is looking for interns, would you be interested? And I was like, uh, heck yes. So I did this internship, it was like for a few days, it was for like an event, they just needed people to like, you know, help guide the customers. Yeah, I was essentially helping to translate I was talking with customers that were coming into the exhibit. I was explaining to them a little bit what the exhibit was about. And that's how I ended up landing myself a part-time job because I was talking to the boss and saying, hey, I'm doing English teaching right now, but I really, really, really want a fashion job. Do you have any jobs available? And sure enough, they did. I was introduced to uh, somebody who was the manager at a really nice store in Harajuku and he said yeah I would love to have you we have tons of foreign customers that come into the store we need somebody who's bilingual who can talk to the customers in English and in Japanese and I was like I'm your girl hire me and that's what they did so I went for an interview I talked to the lady who um, you know was a boss at the store she loved me and I started working there and I did that job for about I want to say like a year on and off and that was a really fun job because it was in a field that I actually really love and that's my other tip for you guys too if you're coming to Japan because you want to work in a specific field make sure you're looking for jobs in that field because it's gonna give you experience working in Japan and it's also gonna give you a sense of what it's like to work in that specific industry so yeah I know it might sound Weird, but do an internship even if it's not paid make sure that it's like a short internship like just a few days or something and you know you never know it could land you a job you know what I'm saying also one thing before we even continue by the way guys I don't know if you guys notice something but one thing that keeps coming up is the fact that my friends have a big part to do in the jobs that I've gotten in Japan so my number one suggestion to you if you have any takeaway to take from this video it's 
just talk to friends. Networking is literally the easiest way to get a job. Look for jobs through friends. Ask people, put it on your social media, say, hey, anybody trying to hire a fun black girl with a lot of personality who's bilingual? Holla. And honey, believe me, you will be surprised. People will be looking for somebody just like you, okay? So I know a lot of you guys are like, I don't want to do English teaching and I'm not interested. Honey, I get you, okay? English teaching can be boring sometimes. Like after I did it for two years, I was like, <laughs> please, I'm done, okay? Um, and that's why working at a share house is a great option. Cause listen, two things you need in Japan, okay? Two main things. One, a source of income, and two, a roof over your head. So guess what? If you want to kill two birds with one stone, you can do that because you can not only live there, but you can also get paid at the same time while you're living there. And if you guys didn't know, I actually did that as well. A friend of mine told me that there was a share house that was looking for people who could live there and also work there at the same time. And I said, I'm up for it, why not? So after a year of living in an apartment with some friends, I decided to move out of there and to move to this share house. And I worked there for, I wanna say roughly a year. And at the same time, uh, you know, I was living there so I could just like come out of my PJs and I could be super chill and have fun. And of course I made tons of friends too. That was the best part. I met so many cool people when I was living there. And if you guys are curious, actually the uh, share house where I used to work is called Haksan. I made a video while I was there um, showing like what the share house looks like. So if you guys are curious, to see that I will leave a link in the description you guys can check out the video and I'll also leave a description link to the actual share house itself so make sure you guys go check that out I would love to talk to you guys about all these jobs that I've done like so many crazy stories so many crazy stories let me tell you um but definitely working at the share house was one of my more exciting jobs it was something so different and really unusual and it was just such a great awesome chance to meet new people make money and work from home so Highly recommend. All right, so tip number seven is try a self-managed job. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, self-managed, Senna, I'm no entrepreneur. I do not have any experience working for myself. I don't know what the heck that is like. What's the paycheck gonna be? I'm a little scared what's going on. Okay, listen up. You do not have to be a professional entrepreneur to be able to make money on your own in Japan. There are three different things that I've done in the past that gave me money from self-managing my own time. And these are jobs I highly recommend for you guys as well. So I'm gonna start with the first one. The first one I did was an English tutoring job. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Senna, how is that different from an English teaching job? Well. It actually is. So English teaching is when you're working for a school, the school will actually provide the supplies, they will give you the materials, and they make up the lesson plan. So all you have to do is show up, you have to learn what the lesson plan is, figure out how you're gonna use the supplies, and then you just teach the kids. And back then I was actually working as an English teaching assistant, so I would just assist the teacher who was already teaching. But English tutoring is a little bit different. I actually had to prepare the materials myself, I had to make a lesson plan for myself, and I basically was the teacher, the everything, the end all be all of the English tutoring job that I was doing. This job, actually the first one I got was, again, through a friend. She was English tutoring some kids, and she said, I'm actually leaving Japan, do you want to tutor them? And I said, why not? Uh, and actually, I'm pretty sure my friend found that tutoring job through a website, so I'll try to ask her for the link and then I'll put it in the description for you guys. But yeah, that's a great option and you can tutor kids in any language. It doesn't have to be English, it can be French, it can be Portuguese, it can be German, it can be Russian. If you speak a language of any kind other than English, you can tutor kids. And you can also tutor adults too, actually. There are people who are looking for like serious tutors. I'm not talking about language exchange, okay? I'm talking about like literal sitting down with like, you know, exercises and things like that. There are people who are looking for that whether they're kids or adults so yeah just do your research look a little bit online and you'll see what you'll find the second thing I did that was a self-managing job was I did babysitting which again was through referral because after tutoring those five kids I think all the moms could see that I loved kids so much and so one of the moms actually recommended me to another friend of hers who was looking for an English speaking babysitter so what I did was whenever that um, you know mom was looking for somebody to take care of her child she would hit me up she would say hey Senna are you free on such and such weekend and and I'll be like, yeah, sure. And so I'd go over to their house and I would babysit the kids. Now, obviously babysitting is one of those things where like not everybody can do it, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, if you don't like kids then obviously babysitting is not for you, don't do it. You don't have to force yourself, okay? But if you do like kids, uh, just get involved with a lot of kid related things. And most likely the parents will either refer you or you can even use a website that will like offer different babysitting jobs. And yeah, babysitting is super fun. If you love kids, I highly recommend it. And then the third and final self-managed job that I did was I did a graphic design slash 
a social media manager job. And if you guys didn't know, that's something that I absolutely love to do. Like I've created music videos in the past. I would manage other people's social media platforms for them. And I love doing graphic design. Anything that requires a computer and something artistic, I am super down for it. Basically, since I was already doing that for a friend of mine, it was kind of like an internship that I did. Someone found out about it and they're like, hey, I know somebody actually who uh, owns a coffee shop and they're looking for somebody to do like graphic design and basically just to help rebrand the whole coffee shop and to manage their social media. So I did that for I think about like four or five months and that was super fun too. Like that was a job that was cool because I was managing myself. I was essentially like hired as a freelancer to do this kind of job and it required a lot of communication. I only did this like later in my years, you know, once I was more comfortable in Japan. And yeah, I was doing that up until like very recently actually. So yeah, if you guys have some kind of special skill, it could be anything, okay? If you can fix computers, if you can like sing songs, if you uh, are good at dancing, whatever this case may be, you know, just offer your services to the world. Say, hey guys, I'm available to do, you know, X, Y, and Z for you at this price. And you'd be surprised. There's definitely somebody out there who's looking for someone just like you. Okay, so last but not least, this is the last tip I have for you guys. And this one is actually probably my favorite by far because it's what I'm doing right now. And that is acting slash modeling slash voice acting. If you guys didn't know, in Japan, there is a big need for foreigners to do like acting jobs or modeling jobs or even voice acting jobs. And so if you guys are interested in doing something like that, you can basically just like look up an agency that does that. Um, one of the biggest agencies out there that does all three is an agency called Freewave. It's one of the first agencies that I joined. I highly recommend it because it's super fun and it also pays really well as well. And yeah, if you guys didn't know, that's what I'm doing right now. And it's what I've been doing for the past like year now on and off. I've done acting jobs. Like I've, well, not like full on acting jobs, but I've been like featured in commercials as an extra. I've also been featured in a music video as an extra. Uh, and then I also started doing modeling a little more seriously recently. I'm sure you guys have seen if you follow my Instagram, which if you don't, go check me out right here. And again, like I said, I'll have a link down in the description to the agency that I know of, the biggest one that I've heard of really, that does all three. And uh, yeah, you guys can go check it out for yourselves. And that's it. That's all the tips I have for you guys. I hope that was easy to understand and I hope that you guys uh, learned something. I hope you guys can, you know, find something that's perfect for you, especially if you don't want to do English teaching. Believe me, there are tons of other job options for you guys, okay? So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, make sure you check out the two videos that I'll have right over here. This one is gonna be uh, things that I wish people told me before I came to Japan, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff that nobody told me. And this one's gonna be about how you can convince your parents to let you come to Japan. And even if you're, you know, an adult and you're grown, I'm sure you'll love it, so click on it. Okay, bye. Is the battery gonna die? Oh no, oh no.